is the Sam Sorbo Show. And welcome back. I'm Sam Sorbo, 800-876-4123. I'm joined now by Janiel Shulman. He's the author of a dozen books, including three novels, beginning with Alongside Night. Back in 1979, it was praised over the years by Nobel Prize winning economist Milton Friedman, a Clockwork Orange author, Anthony Burgess. Also, Glenn Beck and Dr. Ron Paul. He's also written scripts for The Twilight Zone and articles for National Review and stuff. Uh, but the film is what he's here to talk about. His film, which is based on uh, Alongside Night, the book, is called Alongside Night. Welcome to the show. Uh, Sam, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. Yeah, it's fun uh, having you on the show. So, so my husband, full disclosure, my husband stars in the movie, and uh, you hired me also to play the wife of my husband, <laughs> which well, was a lot I of mean, fun. It, it, was, uh, it, it was just a pleasure to be able to have the two of you on set uh, playing husband and wife, because I think it's been a while since the two of you did that. Yeah, we we tend not to play husband and wife. It's too too close to reality for us. Uh, but But, Neil, tell me about how the like the genesis of this this book basically because it was quite prescient back in the day now of course we're seeing all of this stuff come to fruition so talk talk about that for a minute well i mean uh when i started writing the book in 1974 uh during the nixon administration uh we were already uh we had many of the economic conditions uh that i thought would lead to uh to a hyperinflationary situation and the destruction of uh of all economic stability uh during uh, during nixon the inflation was so bad that uh, nixon uh, uh adopted keynesian economic policies he uh he said we're all keynesians now and he uh he instituted wage price control controls, uh, which caused massive uh, dislocations. Uh, you recall during your scene, uh, you uh, you know, as Catherine Vreeland, you tell the family, uh, tofu baloney, it's all the market had left. It's because during wage price controls, which you have during the story and alongside night, uh, uh, everything is driven to the black market. And that's what happened when uh, when the, the, the character you, uh, you play, Catherine Vreeland's son, Elliot, uh, gets into the uh, black market underground and everything is available there, but it's not available in the regular supermarkets. And during, you know, right right after Nixon, we had uh, whip inflation. Now, during the Ford administration, so by the time we got to the Carter administration, the economy was in, in free fall. So these were the seeds which, uh, which I was working with when I was writing the novel back in the 70s. But we've had a recapitulation of all of these economic conditions uh, now. Uh, massive government overspending. The debt uh, exceeds what can be collected at any point on the Laffer curve by taxes. And so uh, this debt is monetized by the Federal Reserve System. Them, uh, through quantitative easing, it cre- uh, increases the money supply. We've been lucky up until now that other countries have been eating our debt by accepting the dollar as their reserve currency. But this isn't going to happen much longer as the Chinese economy gets stronger and stronger. And as I portray in the novel, it reaches a point where the government doesn't even have the money to pay the army. So then what? Well, uh, you either have a, a destruction of everything, a, a spin into chaos, or this is America. And we have a tradition of revolution, of the right sort of revolution, not the Marxist revolution, not the destruction of everything, uh, not the, uh, 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 this, the sort that we're always talking about where, uh, w- you know, where people just you know, re- react chaotically. But the, re- the revolution toward freedom, as outlined by Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence, we look for new guards uh, for liberty, that when the government isn't uh, working for the people anymore, we go back to first principles of the Declaration of Independence, the first principles of the the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and we enforce our rights directly, not violently, not by combating the government, but by moving out of the way, by using the principles of jiu-jitsu, that when uh, the government launches illegal and unconstitutional attacks, we move out of the way, have the force miss us, and we build resilient marketplaces and rebuild the economy. So, um, you're libertarian. Oh, yes. Do you subscribe to Bitcoin? Um, I'm more uh, I'm more of a, a gold and silver guy myself. I mean, but, you know, Bitcoin is fine, you know, as a transitional sort of digital currency. But I mean, you find a Phoenician shipwreck from thousands of years ago, and you find gold coins on it. Those coins will still have value today. Uh, historically, uh, gold and silver is what the people have chosen as their uh, as their money through, throughout history, throughout the world, even today. And I think that uh, that you uh, that as a commodity, which is what money is, you want something which has been proven over the long term. I, I, I think Bitcoin is still a bit too new to uh, to know how it's going to react in the long term okay so so now we have an invasion on our border yeah what is your response to that 
Well, I mean, uh, you, you, you can't blame people for wanting to move toward freedom. I mean, fr- freedom is the most attractive commodity in the world, and, and, and we okay, have Okay, but, but we don't have to blame, like, okay... But what? But what? Sh- what should a concerned American citizen, or should American citizens be concerned? Because I'll tell you, probably a large portion of them don't even know what's happening. Uh, that's certainly true, and, and obviously, alongside night is an engine, both as the novel and as the graphic novel and the audio book, and now the new movie, uh, for being able to teach people basic economic principles. Uh, Obviously, if we were not a welfare state, then uh, immigration wouldn't be a problem. As immig- I mean, look, you know, at the time of the American Revolution, there was no immigration procedure to go through. Every- everybody was welcome here because we needed to build the economy. And if you have a free market, if you have a sound, uh, a sound economic system, then uh, people coming in, whether or not they sign the guest book, as, as Dennis Miller puts it, uh, is- isn't a problem. The problem is that we have a uh, system of entitlements right now, and, uh, and-, and that's where the problem is. Okay, but but how do we as a, I mean, do you have any sort of ideas for Americans to combat this? Absolutely, I do. Uh, as I say, uh, if, if, if you if you reach a point where the, where you can't solve this problem by electing the right person anymore uh, to the White House or electing Congress, and I, I think we right. have, I, I think we have a system right now where both parties have been so compromised that uh, yeah. I mean, d- during during the Bush administration you had g- government violating principles. They acted more like the Democratic Party historically. They didn't act like historical Republicans anymore. So w- when you can't trust the two major parties to fix this, and and uh, we're not set up in a parliamentary system where it's easy for a minor party to take over, you basically have to work through the economic means. You have to work in the private sector. And so what I advise people to do is to tend to their own affairs to, um, uh, and very frankly, there comes a point when you have to go back to first principles and you say when the government is acting illegally, then justice and law comes out of the marketplace, not out of the government. Wow. Okay. That, so that is that. Would you would you characterize that as a as a libertarian kind of stance, or is that sort of independent even? Of uh, the libertarian? I, I, I don't like to use labels like that because you know when you talk about the word libertarian, people have a lot of baggage right. goes along with it. Uh, I mean, certainly there are institutions in the libertarian movement today which I think uh, are aren't aren't very sound. I go to libertarian conferences and I hear a lot of ideas that I don't agree with. Um, right. Okay. So in other words, uh, I, I like people to think of it as, simply as re-upping the American Revolution, thinking in terms of the basic principles which we all know and love and agree with, the principles of individual liberty, of private property, of free trade, of fair yeah. dealing with each other. Uh, yeah, but and, Neil, you know, we're not being taught this in our schools. When you say American Revolution, people picture a lot of bloodshed and some, some red coats. Like, I don't, I don't know that the talking about revolution uh, equates with uh, kind of a taking care of your own and waiting for the black market to catch up to your your you know goals or whatever. Well, of course, and, and that's the reason why a show and tell approach like I like I use in both the novel and the movie is necessary, and and, and not tr- you know just using buzzwords that people that, that people have lost yeah. the true meaning of. Uh, yeah. uh, again, I mean the American Revolution. Uh, I mean you know you talk to any of the founding fathers who signed the Declaration of Independence, they were engaged oh, in well, a violent, re- uh, violent revolution. Yeah. I, I think that yeah. We, uh, I, I think that we don't need to do that now, that we can use principles that were developed, first of all, by Thoreau in civil disobedience, uh, it was taken okay. up by, by Gandhi and Martin Luther King, and, and then simply the principles of free trade. These are the principles we can use to, uh, to right. protect ourselves and rebuild. Yeah, I can see that. Now, tell me, the movie uh, premieres tonight in uh, Los Angeles, right? We're having our, uh, well, uh, your, your husband, my, uh, my star, Kevin Sorbo, is hosting a red carpet screening at uh, Lemley's Music Hall 3 in Beverly Hills uh, this evening. And uh, we're, uh, uh, I'm sorry you can't be to walk the red carpet with us, but it's going to be a fun night. Fun. And, um, and you're going to do a whole thing afterwards, too, I'm, I'm imagining. Well, not uh, that. We're, we're, uh, Jordan, Jordan Page, who performs uh, musically in, in the movie, is going to be uh, performing live at, at, at our Red Carpets uh, event tonight. And uh, we're going to have a lot of surprise celebrity guests as well. Very cool. I'm excited. If you want more information, you can go to alongsidenightmovie.com. AlongsideNightMovie.com. Also, there's the book, which is available. Where's the book available? Uh, obviously on Amazon. Uh, yeah. If you, go, if you go look for Alongside Night on Amazon, look for the new movie edition with Kevin Sorbo and, uh, on the cover. And, right. Uh, uh, that's available both as a print edition, as a Kindle edition, as an audiobook edition. We also have a new graphic novel, which is available both as a print edition and a graphic novel.
Well, it's great because the graphic novels appeal to the younger uh, younger people, and uh, I think that's really important because when you talk about revolution and uh, fixing the system sort of from within and that kind of thing, people don't even understand the system. You uh, return to basic principles. They think the basic principles are some angry old white dudes who created a country. I, I don't know that they really understand that. So I'm excited that there's a graphic novel and all of this other uh, th these other ways to disseminate this information. J. Neil Shulman, thank you so much for coming on the program. 800 876 4123. I'll be back after a quick break. This is the Sam Sorbo Show.